Hi everybody and welcome to this week's webinar from Professional Beauty and Hairdressers Journal Ireland. We weren't with you last week so we're back again this week and uh, we're talking to Liz McKeown who is, I think you're probably all very familiar with Liz at this stage, Liz is a salon business expert, a coach, best-selling author, speaker, trainer and of course she's a columnist for our magazine. Professional Beauty and Hairdressers Journal Ireland. So, hi Liz, nice to see you. Oh, hi Karina, and lovely to see you. And thank you so much for today. I really appreciate it. It's no worries at all. So, uh, we are going to discuss the topic of promoting your salon to maintain a full appointment book. And I guess we decided on this one because, uh, as we spoke about it, Liz, um, most salons. I would imagine are back to, if we want to say normal, the new normal, whatever, um, back to normal now in terms of, you know, clearing backlogs that would have built up during lockdown. And some of them are possibly, I know myself from talking to people, possibly experiencing a bit of a slump after the mad rush after lockdown. Um, now, I think that was probably always going to happen because, you know, they were never going to be as busy as they were going to be after the 29th of June for that period, you know. Um, so ongoing promotion at this point in time is very important. Um, I think you would agree with that, would you? I, yeah, I think, it's, um, I think it's everything really at the moment. And I think we all knew, and though exactly what you're saying, that reopening was going to be in two phases. It was going to be that initial rush, and then, it, then we were going to move into phase two. And now I'm saying to people, now is really your opportunity. The first phase is over. We don't know what's ahead of us, um, you, know, you know, from day to day. And it's about living with the uncertainty. And, you know, there's disciplines that are required here. And I think one of the biggest disciplines as a salon owner or a manager, or if I'm just, you know, if I'm uh, you know, not a person running my own column, because um, that's like a little business within a big business. Mm -hmm. First of all, I think is to bring the discipline in to say, you know, there's nothing that I can do about that, about that, um, about COVID. There's nothing I can do about the economy, but there's quite a lot I can do about my own business and to try as much as possible to keep the focus on that. Also, you know, and I know I'm starting really at basics, which I probably mentioned before, but I want to revisit this green if it's okay, because it's really important. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, then it's about saying to, my, saying to myself, what is it that I want? Now, we've got to accept that the world is changing. Mm. And whatever I had in mind for my business, you know, in January 2020, it's different now. The world is different. And I've got to change how I operate now. And maybe things just fell into place before. And, you know, at the end of the month, I had enough money to pay everything that I needed to pay. Now we've got to make it happen. <laughs> Now we've got to use every single bit of time. And I'm being really strict with, with the salons that I'm working with insofar as saying that we cannot have any white space because you're losing enough white space at the moment for cleaning and disinfecting. So after that, we need the columns filled. We need clients coming back more often and spending more money. We need new clients that are coming in. And unfortunately, the salon, well, fortunately and unfortunately, many salons didn't reopen. Therefore, there are new clients around and, you know, mm. you know, it's, a, you know it's, it's a sad way to get people, but you do have new clients coming back in now. Um, and let's move those into the category of clients who want to come back in more often and want to spend more money. So now is an enormous opportunity for the salon industry. But people have got to own their own position. You decide as a salon owner, as a column owner, as a manager, do you want your business to struggle? And just barely get there or do you want to take it now and make sure that you absolutely thrive over the coming months because i'm really pleased for the industry and i'm really pleased for everybody because you all work so hard that you know if lockdown taught us anything it's how important the salon is to every consumer mm. in the world it has totally repositioned the salon industry as not literally the number one service that, that consumers want globally like when have we ever had the luxury of that before you are top yeah. of everybody's agenda so now is your chance to actually take your position 
come out stronger from this than you would have previously. Stay in your bubble, stay in your zone and work every single client and be the best that you can be. And know, you know, that whatever goes on externally, that's not, you know, that's not in my control. There's nothing I can do about any about that. Can I make sure that every customer has a fantastic time, that they don't think of going to any other salon except into mine? Well, I can do my best to make sure that that's the outcome that I get. Now, I feel that's a much stronger thinking starting off position for a salon owner to say rather than I'm worried sick about what's going to happen about COVID. Yeah. You know, over the last couple of weeks, I was asking people to email in, in to me because I was, you know, um, you know, developing new content. And I was asking people to email me in, you know, concerns and challenges that the new norm is bringing. And I was really worried for people. The number of emails that I got in from people saying they're really worrying and they're really panicking about the future. And I can really identify with that because, you know, I, you know, I'm such a worrier myself and I really have to work on it. So I can sit and worry or I can say, right, OK, there's nothing I can do about what's going on externally. But I'm not going to waste my time worrying because there's nothing I can change anyway. I'm going to take that time and I'm going to be incredibly proactive and I'm going to promote my business. I'm going to use every single bit of white space that I have now in September to make sure I have no white space in October and in November, bearing in mind that the consumer is looking for what we have. So I'm starting off with that, Karina, if that's OK, to say reposition your thinking and put a plan in place to make sure that you have no white space, which brings us right back to in dovetails nicely into the topic of today, which is promoting my business. So yeah. yes, that's, that's my, that's actually my number one job because I always kind of, all my, all my career, I've worried about, I've wondered about this phrase that says sales and marketing. <laughs> well, actually, mm -hmm. why isn't it marketing and sales? <laughs> because if I'm not promoting my business, I don't get yeah. So we market and you know what? You know, I didn't train as a therapist to become a marketing person. But if I don't market and I don't promote myself and I keep myself a well-kept secret, well, then my business is not going to survive. So we're all running promotional businesses, whether we like it or not. So, yes, we've, we've got to promote and I would much prefer that people would have marketing and promotional activities ready to work on for whenever they have white space, rather than being busy for a little while, then on, then seeing, then panicking, oh my God, we've, we've got no clients in, and then starting to discount. That's not a very, a very safe way to proceed because the client who follows, who's interested in the deal will follow the discount. She will not, he, she or he will not be loyal to you. They'll just keep following the discount. So don't want you over consumed with panicking and with worrying because you, you just dive into the, you know, from desperation, you'll move into the discounting. Then you've got to work twice as hard for half the money. Yeah. And we yeah. saw in the recession in Ireland and um, that that really put people under horrendous pressure. And nobody wants that for you now, bearing in mind that every consumer on the planet wants to go to the salon. So, yeah. so promote, 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 promote. And, and then just in terms of, you know, we talk about promoting and like everything, I suppose, at the end of the day costs some money. And I know that like some of it can be done for free, um, but for just, you know, the, the, the regular salon owner, manager, as you call or the, the column owner or whatever, um, if they're looking at their incomings and their outgoings, what's the best way for them to decide on how much they should spend on promotion? Should they start like at the, sort of what they can do for free and work from there or go the other way around? Yes. I, I, I would, well, as a rule of thumb in business, um, no more than 10% should ever be spent on your marketing. So 40% okay. maximum on labor, and then the other 50% for all your running costs. That's a general sort of rule of thumb. But if we can bring that 10% down, that's even better, isn't it? So maximum. So if I bring in a um, thousand pounds this week, no more than a hundred is to be spent on marketing, but that's actually quite a sizable amount. So yeah. we can bring that down to 5% or 3%. But before we start spending money, 
we can use time. And I know time is a valuable resource as well, but you know, time is money. And there's a few ways that I can actually promote my business without it actually, without it even costing me anything. And what I do is I divide it into online and offline. So I have online, which are all the social media platforms, which must be attended to because it's, you know, we all know it moves so quickly. So I need yeah. to be, I need to be strategic and I need to be out there and need to be vigilant on that, which is a huge discipline in itself. So if it's something, if that's something that you haven't got time to do, if that's mm -hmm. something that isn't your skill set, maybe that's where you put your budget. Maybe you, you pay somebody else, you know, two or three hours a week. Yeah do that for you i always think you know we'd be much more consistent of things we enjoy and things we're good at mm -hmm. so you know but if we say online it must happen because that's the nature of the world at the moment it's very online so i'm either spending my time on it i'm analyzing it and i'm getting a result either way it has to be done um if i if i'm not the person to do it then i find somebody else to do it for me and another good thing about the moment at the moment is there's plenty of labor out there you know yeah. there's people to help with things um and where something might have cost a fortune previously you know unfortunately there are people available in the marketplace who can help you now because they're not working so so find somebody who can help you with that if it's not your thing you must decide what your budget is and you stick to your budget if you're going to spend on paid advertising online test it don't just decide right i'm taking in a new treatment and i'm going to spend a thousand pounds or a thousand euros advertising that on facebook this this week no spend 10 pounds spend 15 euros and, and and track it allocate a little bit of time on that to reviewing your reports mm -hmm. have a strategy around it I like to use, um, you know, um, platforms like Hootsuite where I can actually schedule up all my posts so I can, you know, decide right, I'm spending an hour on that and then it's done. So it's time and money are so connected in here. So you have your online strategy and that's brilliant and you must attend to it on a very, very consistent basis. But what I would like to have a look at today is offline. Okay. So a sort of offline promotion, which might cost a little bit of time and a little bit of money, but can give a, an enormous reward. And the first thing that I would like to talk about here is the power of referrals. Okay. Mm -hmm. Referrals are the best way to grow a business. It is your strongest, it's just the easiest way to grow a business. And they are your, they are your best spenders because the, the business that you generate through referrals, somebody else has done the work for you. Somebody else has done the selling for you. Those, those clients come to you ready to spend and feeling positive and good about your business anyway. So don't stop waiting for referrals now and stop, start asking for them. So referrals are really, really powerful and people aren't asking for them enough in salons. Always 40% of business in salons is generated via word of mouth. I am quite certain that number has risen, or, you know, and I don't have it yet, but I'm quite sure more than 40% of your business can be generated via word of mouth at the moment because customers have nowhere to go. Like people are saying to me, Liz, I might lose business because people have no events. And I'm saying, but you are the event. You are the event in the salon now. Everybody on the world in the planet wants to feel a bit better. Where better to go yeah. than the salon to feel better? Everybody is craving connection. Everybody is craving interaction, physical connection. Like the basics of being a human being. And you fulfill that need in a salon. You fulfill that need in your customers. So stop waiting for referrals. Ask for them. Now, I know the last time I got 500 business cards printed, I think I spent something like 18 euros on that. Right. I, work, I work with the salon chain in the UK and she knows statistically it has been proven that if somebody is happy with their hair salon, they will on average talk about you to nine people. And she gets her stylists to um, put their um, she put bundles of nine business cards together in a lovely little envelope. 
Okay. And then, and then you just say to people at the end, you know, um, I'm new here or we're just starting to open it up again or, or whatever it is. There's a few business cards. I'd really appreciate it if you could give those to a few, few of your colleagues when you get back to the office. Business yeah. cards fit into people's purses. Okay. Yeah. And if somebody says, oh, your hair is lovely, then you can say, well, I was just down with Corinne and such and such a salon. Yeah, it's gorgeous. I can't wait to go out. Here's, yeah. here's a business card. But that costs so little. So that's so word of mouth. So stop, uh, stop waiting for referrals and start asking for them. That's, that's the first thing that I would say. Um, word of mouth and understand the power of word of mouth. It is incredibly yeah. powerful. But ask ask for the referral like i had somebody said to me in a hair salon once um he followed me out to reception and i knew he was really shy and embarrassed about saying it but he actually said to me i'm new here and this is like pre-covid he said i'm new here and i'd really like to stay and i said i know you told me and he said well you know would you mind giving out my my card to a few people and i was like no not about not at all so customers will happily help you but you must tell them to help you so that would be one simple easy way to promote your business that costs you nothing except a couple of sentences and a, and a business card i think it's handy to put something into somebody's hand and yeah. a business card will have your number on it and could possibly have the person's name on it also i find that particular salon that i'm talking about she gets the stylist she gets them their own business cards so each person okay. has their own business cards and that makes the, you know that promotes that person in their own way that they're saying you know i actually have my own business card it's making that person feel and look as important as they actually are so my first thing would be the power of referrals give it everything that you have the second offline activity that i would like people to spend a little bit of time on is their database okay, okay. There is gold in all your databases, okay? Absolute gold. Your database is your most important asset. You know, if we never had COVID, if somebody rang me and said, Liz, I'm thinking of selling my business in a couple of years time, I'm not really sure, you know, how to go about it. The first thing that I will say to them is, let's look at your database. It is your most valuable asset. Now, most sounds that I'm talking to at the moment will be saying things like, oh, I have 2,000 in my database, I have 3,000 in my database. If everybody on your database was in your business, you wouldn't need any more clients. Yeah. So work those databases. You know, check them, allocate a little bit of time to print off reports and go through them. Like if you took an hour over the weekend in a coffee shop now that we can go into them and take your reports and analyze your clients. Who have we not seen for a long time? Who hasn't come back? There's a second wave of clients due out now. And they're the clients who were just postponing going to salons. They're coming back now. So who have we not yeah. seen? So, so analyze your reports. Um, so who have we not seen? Who comes in for particular services, but they don't avail of all our services? Who buys retail that we haven't seen for a long time? So get in there and get the gold out of your database. Email marketing is free. Okay. Most software, um, most software systems will have an email facility on it. Get in front of your clients. History continues to show in every single economic upheaval throughout history. The, the businesses that market, 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 you don't have to be selling, you just be in front of your clients. Um, will absolutely thrive and rocket once the economy settles back down because you keep in touch with your clients. So email is a very, very cost effective way to do that. And we know everybody isn't going to open up every single email. What about it? If I have 2000 people on my database and 10%, which would be, you know, if we if you can get it over 10%, that's fantastic. But generally people 10% open up a database. If 10% or 10, open up an email, if 10% open up an email, that's 200 people. Yeah. OK, that, um, you know, that I may not have, you know, that may not come back. And if I wasn't sure about this now, I certainly became very sure of it last Easter 12 months when I was working with a chain of salons and we decided to email people that we hadn't seen for two years about an Easter promotion. 
and so we sent out an email and that's fine we got some people in the following week i took a notion and i said to myself let's send out another email to the people that we haven't seen for three years or more and right. if they don't if they don't come back then we'll tidy up the database and we'll eliminate them i sort of forgot about it and then the owner rang me and she doesn't work in, in the businesses all the time. And she rang me and she said, there's something going on with the salons this week. We've got 21,000 euros worth of new bookings in this week. What happened? <laughs> From an email. Okay. Yeah. So we do, you do your marketing and then you combine that with outstanding customer service and an internal sales process and you're home and dry. So in that case, I was able to work with all the teams and explain to them and work with them and say, we have all these new clients that we haven't seen or you haven't seen for three years. We have them back now on the peril of your life. Do not let them out of here without another appointment. <laughs> Do not let them out of here without patch testing them. You know, everything, you know, you've had new products, new services in since they were here the last time. Show them around, give them the information, do patch tests, book them in for free consultations, hook them back in. We don't want to, we don't want them disappearing for another three years. So there is gold in your databases and work those databases. Um, and then you know what, you don't have to spend any money on promotion then, because then I think it's really important now in terms of filling columns that clients are put on courses, that are put on programs, that they leave with their next appointment, um, that they leave with a plan for their hair or for their skin or for their nails or whatever it is. So built into promotion is that you train your team, forget about single services. The new world, the new norm in salons is more money from fewer clients. Health and safety guidelines, you cannot have people coming back in. You know, you can't squeeze people in for five minutes the way you would have previously. 15 yeah. minutes appointments are costing you too much money. So longer appointments um, and, and you get people in more often. So promote, promote, promote. Use every bit of white space that you have um, to, to work on promoting your business. Don't leave it to all uh, online, which I know is incredibly important, but there are activities that you can be doing to bring clients back in. I think I'm seeing so much on social media. I really think people need to work a little bit more, if that's okay, on video. You know, when I started making videos, you know, a long time ago, I had to hire, you know, even for simple things, I had to hire studios. I had to hire film crews. Now, yeah. <laughs> now I can just hand somebody my iPhone and say, make yeah. a video. And yeah. the, reason I'm, the reason I'm talking about video here is because the future of your business depends on your relationship with your customers. Okay. Yeah. So, you, I'm repeating that because it's so important. The future of your business depends on your relationship with your customers. Um, everything's gone so one dimensional, isn't it? So like a, a poster, a post on, 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 on social media is very, it's just a picture. But people buy people first. So if mm -hmm. you were just, you know, and like we're all very forgiving of one another now. Like I know I was on social media with white hair for five months. I had no choice but to do it. You know, and everybody <laughs> was very forgiving. So it doesn't matter if you get it wrong. Practice makes perfect. Um, so I would be saying allocate a little bit of time to talk to your customers with video. Use that video on your website. Use it, you know, on your social media posts. Previously, people could have walked into your salon and said, can I pick up a brochure? They can't do that anymore. And they weren't just coming in to say, can I have a brochure? They were coming in to get a feeling of and a sense of your business. People can't do that anymore. So I think video is really powerful in so far as I can get a sense of you. If I go onto somebody's website and they're having a little conversation and here's our team and everybody has to say hello and I'm so-and-so and, -so and you know, a little tour around the salon, then that's replacing the drop-in. But video yeah. isn't anything now you have your iphone you're paying for it every month anyway use it an awful lot more because it helps you to build your relationship with your clients so video is is really important it doesn't cost anything and i'm always looking for um you know a good return 
on whatever promotion I'm doing. So if I'm spending money, I'm spending time on something that I'm, I'm getting a return on it. So, and I'm always looking for the wins. What, you know, what's going to get me, you know, get me clients in, um, but isn't costing me a huge amount of time and isn't costing me a huge amount of money. Yeah. That's an easy thing to do. The other thing that I would always like to do is to allocate a little budget every week to post. Now, I know it might sound really old fashioned saying this, but I don't know about you, Karina, but I don't open every email that I get. I open every single bit of post that I get. Yeah. I will dive on anything that comes in with a handwritten um, address. So I think that's not a bill. And if it's a nice bright envelope, oh, I just yeah. to open it. So when yeah. I have a salon, you know, it might just be like 20 euros a week. I'm going to allocate 20 euros a week to post. And maybe the certain, you know, age group or demographic of clients that may not be on social media, um, or maybe I haven't seen them for a long time. It would be really nice to send like a personalized card to somebody, you know, haven't seen you for a long time, hope you're doing okay. And I tell the story all the time of the salon I was in. I was in the salon working with an owner one day and we were in her office. And I always find it interesting that we always think it's the, it's, there's something wrong or there's a, there's a problem. But somebody came in and said to the owner, um, so-and-so's on the phone and she's insisting on speaking to you. <laughs> the owner said to me, oh, what's wrong now? And I was like, I, I, was, I, I don't know. <laughs> and she came back a couple of minutes later and she said, the, the person rang her to say, thank you for the for the birthday card uh, the only card i got you've made my birthday so yeah. little gestures can mean so much to other people so yeah it, like could you have a little budget there to send information out to people by post every week and it's about ring fencing your clients now and staying in front of them somebody else said to me last week um you know, my, her client said to her, you know, I love, I wait on your email every month. I wait on your newsletter. And I said to her, well, look, why don't we start sending out newsletters once a fortnight then? Yeah. Hey, it's a little bit more work and maybe you have to pay the graphic designer for two hours, an extra two hours. So that's what I mean, being really vigilant with your budget. And we actually worked out then because we know people are really stressed and upset at the moment but we we worked out a series of fortnightly newsletters for the next six weeks about stress busting treatments in her salon okay so so that that doesn't cost anything really so it's about having an absolute little plan and what i used to do in my salon was i used to spend the first hour every single morning doing my marketing every single hour because it was my most important activity was my marketing so that um so that and promotion or whatever we want to call it but it's yeah. actually you know making sure that i have a continuous pipeline of clients coming in clients that i have you know my regulars in inverted commas that could be coming more often and spending more, more money and new clients and to make sure that they want to come more often and spend more money so i must have little activities going on all the time and i've always found there's something about activity if i start to to do things things change so i might say i'm going to write to 20 people this week and hopefully like a few of them will come back maybe none of them will come back but somehow the phone starts to, to ring. I don't know what that's about, but activity causes change and it's really important. And also, you know, people have got to be so careful in terms of your own health and your own well-being. And you can't allow yourself to get too stressed. And the worrying and the panic could become all consuming. But if I have an actual to do list, so we'll have time to worry yeah. about get on with this. I think that's really yeah. important. And I think things don't have to be complicated. I think it can be simple. So I used to find it really helpful to actually, I know this sounds like really basic, but in my A4 notebook every month, I would start, so say for October, I'd go October down the left-hand column, the first, the second, the third, the fourth, right through to the end of the month. And at the top of the, the page, I would draw columns and one might be the window passing, but you know, the, the window. One might be a friend, one might be um, the website, social media, um, a particular ad that I might have taken out. And at the top of the page, I would write, you know, all these different marketing activities that I had going on. And every time a new client would come in, I would just say to them, how did you hear about us? And I would take it on my sheet. So the window 
at the window, yeah. the window, the window. And then I think, oh, I didn't realize I was getting that many people coming in from the window. And then I invested in light boxes. And, you know, so I, I tracked where the customers were coming from. And then I invested in that activity. And I don't have to do it all myself. I have teams around me. I have, if you have people around you and they're not full all the time, well, you're buying their time and you're buying their skill. So yeah. do you say to them, yes, yeah, sit in the staff room there and chat away, which well, they can't even do that at the moment, or come here and I'm going to give you a job to do. And this is going to sound awful, but I always found, you know, if I was struggling to get somebody to rebook clients, I would have loads of marketing for them to do and they had to come with me to do it. <laughs> now, <laughs> nobody wants to be walking up and down the street with their boss. So if somebody wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't rebook their clients, I say, oh, great, you're free for an hour. Here's the bundle of leaflets. <laughs> We're going out together. And I would make the poor fortunate walk up and down the street with me. And then I would walk in and out of offices and give out, give out you know, um, flyers. Again, flyers have got so cheap. And I know there isn't a huge return on them, but people hold on to them. You know, they keep them or they yeah. put them up in notice boards or whatever. And then I'd shove that person in the door and say, now you go in <laughs> place <laughs> and they would just start rebooking because they'd know if, if they had white space i'd be saying put on your coat we're going out okay so you can make this a bit of fun you know sure that wasn't fun for that person but anyway um <laughs> you know there's you know, none of that costs a huge amount of money it just takes a bit of time so if there's white space have have marketing and promotional jobs there for people to do Okay, it just it just becomes so much easier. So if somebody isn't with the client, they come and they take a job, uh, and they and I think give people things that they like doing. For example, I could not cold call in a million years, but I'm quite happy to go to a networking event. And there's lots of events there now at the yeah. moment for small businesses and women in business and all that sort of thing. So I so it would be my personal preference to join a networking group. So find places that your your clients are. And, and network there if at all possible and another really useful thing that I used to do that I found really worked again it didn't cost me anything was to have joint ventures with other local businesses right that, yeah you know that had similar customers a similar customer base to me but we weren't in competition so that could be the local coffee shop it could be the local flower shop it could be a nice boutique it could be the dentist i know i used yeah. to send loads of people to my dentist for teeth whitening if i was working on their skin go and get you and then then he would send me back people as well so i think if you had yeah four or five people in your area that you could be referring people to um that's a phone call that's meeting up with them for a coffee once a month, which is really, you know, you know, nice at the moment to be able to do that. It's maybe saying to yeah. them, come in and experience our services. Let me experience yours and I'll put your flyers in my bag and you put yours in mine. So, you know, printing has come right down. I know the last time I got brochures printed or flyers printed, it was like 21 euros for a thousand flyers. So okay. work your time be really strategic about your money track it you know where is it coming from so if i spend 20 euros on flyers and i didn't get a single customer well i'm not going to do that next month but i haven't wasted two thousand pounds i've wasted 20 euros to test it try it make sure that your staff are following through and they're maximizing the opportunity with with the clients um make time to to check your um to check your reports and see where your clients are coming from and build this into a process and no no time is wasted because it's just too important so use your time and you won't actually have to spend that much money make sure there's a steady steady trickle of clients coming through because otherwise you'll be really busy and then you'll hit a brick wall and then where are the customers and you have to start again and yeah, a lot of the emails that I got over the last few weeks are like, Liz, I'm busy now. What am I going to do about October and November? And I'm saying, well, it's September now. Let's work now in September to make sure that you don't have any white space. Yeah. In and in November. So I think it's a huge, huge opportunity 
you know, every challenge brings its opportunities. And this is the opportunity for you now, um, that now is the time to market. Now is the time to, to have a process um, to tr attract clients to you and to make sure that they stay with you and they never want to go anyplace else. So we have to accept we're running marketing and sales businesses. Yeah. And I think the message that you're giving as well is that like, it's not something that you do, you know, once every so often when you have a bit of downtime, it's like, it has to be consistent. It has to be daily. Yeah. And it has to be constant in order to keep the book, you know, at a, at a level that, I mean, obviously your appointment book isn't going to be the same all the time, but to keep it at a certain level. You know, we can't put a price on peace of mind. Yeah. And I have no peace of mind if I look forward in September and I have a team, I look forward to October, November, and I have a team of five or six people around me and nobody has any clients. Yeah. Yeah. There's no, there's no joy in running your business no. then. No, it's all stress. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it, yeah, it's just, you know, and, and also, I think it's okay like to be in a, in a panic when it's short term and when, when we're slightly worried. But we're in this now for the long haul. We know yeah. we are. So that sort of long-term stress will have, you, you, will have an impact on your well-being. And interestingly enough as well, a lot of people emailed me to say, I'm managing the stress at work and I'm holding it together at work, but it's seriously impacting on my home life, on my yeah. personal life. And you know what? Everybody works too hard for that as well. That's not fair. So yeah. I would be saying, take every minute that you have and be as proactive with every sort of promotion that you can possibly think of. Try it, test it, and, uh, and just go for it, knowing that consumers want what it is that you have. Okay. Um, thank you so much. That was, uh, I feel like I'm, I'm nearly equipped now to go off and promote my own business. Okay. I'm not, uh, uh, yeah, good. I'm not sure if there's any questions in there. Is there anything you want me to go over again? Or have no, I given you, I have I given so, you enough? Uh, no, I, I think it was just um, because we're actually nearly out of time anyway, because you have so much information. But I think, yeah, just to, to repeat that message of, you know, promotion, as you pointed out at the very beginning, um, it actually should be, come before the word sales. It should be yeah. market promotion because it's like if you don't promote, you're not going to get, you know, as you, as you said as well before, like if your clients don't know where you are and what you do, you know, how are you going to get clients? <laughs> this 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 is not the time to be a secret. Yeah. <laughs> this this is not the time to keep it to yourself about how great you are. This is the time yeah. to get out there and let the whole world know how amazing you and your team are and how fantastic your business is and come in, come in and give us a try. Yeah, just, and, just... and as you said as well, you know, and, and it was pointed out to me um back when, when all the salons were reopening. Um, that whole, you know, to capitalize basically on on how much salons are valued, that, and that was something that we discovered during lockdown. I know. <laughs> that, you know, the hair, the hair and beauty industry, you know, was, uh, you know, for the want of a better expression, the breakout star <laughs> of the lockdown. Abs absolutely, and like, yeah, it has totally repositioned the industry and the world of commerce, and. It's just yeah. there to go for now. And um, now, now is your time. And, and yeah. in, like in relation to, to retail, um, yeah, retail sales just totally exploded. So, um, and that has all shifted into the, into the professional market. So, yeah. so it's the most exciting time that we, you know, it's the most exciting time to be in the salon industry. So um, yeah. claim, claim your position and decide right. for yourself do I want to come out of this stronger than when we went in? Because yeah. one of three things will happen. Businesses will either survive they, or they'll go, they'll close, they'll survive or, or they'll thrive. Be in the category yeah. of thriving. Yeah. Yeah. And, and enjoy okay, it. Okay, listen, that's, that's all um, really that's all time for. informative. Yeah. And thank you so much for joining us, Liz. And, thank uh, you. It's been my pleasure. We'll, we'll, we'll touch base with you again and in in maybe later in the year. And, um, Thank you, everybody, for joining us as well. And uh, we're back next week. We'll be back on the Thursday, um, again, at 12 o'clock, back to our normal slot. And uh, next week, we're going to be talking to the owner of a salon in Kilkenny called Crown, which was uh, not, it was quite newly opened before um, lockdown happened. So we're going to be talking to them about, you know, the sort of maybe slightly different challenges 
that you face when you come back after lockdown when your business was quite new to start off with so uh just a little bit of a different slant so uh, again that'll be next week so thank you again liz for joining us my pleasure uh, thank you and lovely yeah. to see you thank you thanks liz. Bye. See ya. Bye. thank you